new Starship revealed. It's huge. And it's hauling tons of cargo to the moon. SpaceX just revealed a surprise new Starship design, and NASA's got big plans for it. We're talking heavy cargo deliveries to the moon, astronauts living there for weeks at a time, and a crucial step towards deep space exploration. But first, there's a hurdle with Orion's heat shield, and SpaceX needs to master refueling in space. Hit that like button, because we're about to dive deep into NASA's next giant leap. And if you want to stay up to date on all things space, be sure to subscribe to the channel. NASA unveiled a stunning new Starship concept. The Orion capsule issue is being addressed by Artemis engineers, and SpaceX validates their strategy for orbital replenishment. NASA is adding more lunar landers to its fleet. The organization unveiled its newest major endeavor on April 19th with a press release showcasing two new vehicles. Versions of the Blue Moon lander from Blue Origin and the Starship human landing system with heavy load. According to NASA, they invoked an option in the contracts with the two businesses back in November 2023, requesting that these new Starship HLS and Blue Moon variants be developed expressly to carry very big goods to the moon, without the need for personnel assistance. What kind of cargo does NASA possibly have? According to the briefing, the new variations must be able to land a cargo of between 26,000 and 33,000 pounds, or 12 and 15 metric tons, on the moon. Additionally, both vehicles must be prepared to launch no sooner than the Artemis 7 mission, which is presently scheduled for September of 2023. That's a long wait, but it makes sense that these new versions might take some time to produce given the busy pace of the Artemis mission. Simply view the renders. The new spaceship lander is obviously different from earlier models It no longer has the windows depicting a crew compartment, which serves as a reminder that both of these vehicles will be totally automated. However, the new cargo crane is still very much the main attraction. It's considerably larger. What look to be early renderings of a pressurized rover concept are being offloaded by a gigantic crane that is supported by a considerably larger piece of the ship. Similar to this one that Toyota and the Japanese Space Administration JAXA are developing for NASA. NASA has signed a new agreement with Japan, aiming to establish a new era of collaboration between the two space programs. Japan will provide resources for NASA's Dragonfly mission to Titan and the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope. Japan's primary contribution to Artemis will be a pressurized lunar rover, capable of accommodating two astronauts for up to 30 days. If Japan can build the vehicle, NASA will develop it for the moon. The two landers that NASA has chosen to support are Starship and Blue Moon, therefore they will be receiving the cash to attempt to carry this off, which is excellent news for these two businesses. Even better, it appears that both vehicles have the capacity required for this mission already. When Starships reach their full operational capacity, their payload mass and low Earth orbit could reach up to 150 tons. Because Blue Moon is smaller than Earth, it can supposedly carry at least 20 tons, or 30 if they utilize the disposable version. Therefore, as SpaceX arrives in orbit and begins the refueling process, they may very easily transport almost 10 times what NASA needed more on that in a second. This implies that this task can be completed by both NASA's primary and redundant landers. Given that both businesses have emissions from their primitive versions of their vehicles years before NASA's new deadline, all they need to do is prove it. It doesn't appear like a particularly lofty request. NASA just verified that SpaceX is on schedule to finish its planned vehicle-to-vehicle -to -vehicle to transfer technology demonstration by the end of 2025. SpaceX conducted the first technological demonstration of in-space fuel transfer during the test flight of their Starship prototype rocket on March 14th. This operation is necessary for the firm to proceed with their lunar missions for NASA. Ten metric tons of liquid oxygen had to be transferred from the header tank at the forward tip of Starship to a primary tank located within the mid-body in order to complete this test. It's safe to say that Starship continued on the journey and was lost after re-entry, but little else is known about the status of the process after it allegedly occurred, which happened 24 minutes and 31 seconds into the flight. Therefore, the company was thinking about more than just this one test. But that began to change on April 26th when an administrator from NASA verified that the transfer had gone down without a hitch. The NASA Deputy Associate Administrator for the Moon to Mars program, speaking at the NASA Advisory Council's Human Exploration and Operations Committee, stated that SpaceX is on track for the next phase, which would be a fuel transfer between two ships in space, even though the test results are still being examined. Propellant was successfully transferred from one tank to another. The plan is to launch a target starship first, 
which will be intercepted by a chaser spacecraft. Automatically align with the dock transfer fuel before breaking off for a burn upon re-entry. SpaceX is currently preparing for a second launch, which would certainly necessitate the launch of two ships in quick succession. For several months now, witnesses have observed the tower and and Olam being assembled at the Boca Chica location. That's only one component, though, in order to handle the delicate process, both cars will require active docking mechanisms and automated navigation systems. As of right now, SpaceX appears to have passed this stage. The business can now concentrate on meeting their 2025 deadline for a comprehensive demonstration, which NASA must approve before approving Starship to conduct any lunar activities, thanks to the success of the transfer method during IF-3. It's evident that SpaceX doesn't want to push out the launch of Artemis 3, the mission that would employ a rudimentary version of the human landing mechanism, any further than it has already been scheduled for 2026. Success thus far is encouraging further Starship test flights are likely to occur prior to the major refueling test. The spacecraft still needs to work out a few kinks such as safe arrival and landing, but that will only buy the engineers more time to perfect the hardware and docking system mechanics they'll need to pull this off. NASA still doesn't know what's wrong with Orion, much less how to fix it. Amit Kshatriya, the Artemis mission administrator, informed the gathering members of the NASA Advisory Council Committee meeting on April 26 that there was an abnormality in the heat shield on the Artemis 1. Although the Orion capsule investigation was still ongoing, the team was getting closer to determining the cause. The unmanned space capsule returned to Earth during the 2021 Artemis 1 mission, swooping through the atmosphere and landing in the Pacific Ocean. Everything seemed normal at first, but NASA noticed a problem when the inspection team reached the heat shield. Heat shields are tricky things, and NASA pays extra attention to even the smallest anomalies after the shuttle explosions. Orion's heat shield had burned up unevenly, and while the pod itself had survived, the flight trajectory had held up well. By all accounts, had a crew been on board, they would have also been fine, so NASA is concerned about an inconsistent heat shield chairing pattern. The issue is that, Despite the fact that their models very closely matched every other event that occurred, they haven't been able to determine why the heat shield didn't burn up as they had projected. The ablative substance called Avcoat, which is utilized to make Orion's heat shield, heats up and then flakes off instead of transferring heat to the primary vehicle. The capsule was screaming back into the atmosphere at 40,000 kmph and heating up to 2760 degrees C A due to its steep trajectory on the way back from the moon. This type of stress has the drawback that it can be quite challenging to identify anything as small as an uneven bird. It takes time to determine the cause, however it is said that Artemis engineers have been conducting smaller-scale experiments on actual models in arc jet labs and wind tunnels. The skip re-entry maneuveries, which was meant to slow Orion down and better position it for splashdown, appears to be the most likely culprit. Although the maneuvers were successful, NASA had not utilized it much prior to Artemis 1. To determine what functions well and what doesn't, the team has been experimenting with various flight profiles. In the end, this is about making sure the content is reliable. If the heat shield eventually functions as intended, an uneven wear pattern won't be a major concern. But you can bet NASA wants to be extra certain of that before putting astronauts in for Artemis 2 and other missions where the flight profile will require the pod to return home at higher speeds. NASA would naturally want to preserve what they have, because replacing the entire heat shield system would be a significant undertaking. In the end, though, it comes down to statistics. During the discussion, Kshatriya mentioned that after everything is put together, we would either have a flight rationale or not. Physics cannot be made to alter in order to save money. In order for the team to fix other systems in time for NASA to return humans to the moon in 2025, let's hope that this burn pattern turns out not to be too serious. Hope you liked the video. The future of lunar exploration is getting exciting. What questions do you have about these new plans? Leave them in the comments and we can explore them together. Also, don't forget to give a thumbs up. Also, check out the video here lined up for you.